Growing, the channel where we invite you to join us on our travels around Southern Africa. Because ukuku la kukubona isinto, we grow when we see and experience new things. In this, our very first episode, we set off to the Lowfeld. We'll visit the town of Hutzbreit, explore the mountains of the Klein Drakensberg, learn about wildlife conservation, and visit an eco village. First stop, Schubert and Sien's Potsdal to get some putt course. It's hard to miss this eye-catching roadside stop near Leidenberg, and the idea of fresh cold orange juice was too tempting to pass by. Soon enough, however, we were driving through the picturesque farmlands and towns of the Lowfeld, heading ever closer to the Kruger National Park. But before heading into the park, we had two nights to spend at Shik Shack Backpackers near Hootsprate. The Backpackers is part of Nourish Eco Village. Nourish is a non-profit organization registered with the Department of Social Development. Their aim is to fight poaching by fighting poverty through integrated, holistic and sustainable community projects such as school outreach programs and education, community involvement in tourism, nature conservation, and sustainable farming. The Backpackers is charmingly decorated with upcycled materials, and we received a warm welcome with a side of refreshing cold water. If you are in the area, I encourage you to visit this vibrant spot and support the amazing work they do. After some snacks and refreshments, we headed out to Maholo Holo Animal Rehabilitation Center. The afternoon tour begins at 3, but I suggest that you arrive at least half an hour early to have a look at the museum and learn all about the centre and the animals they work with. Moholo Holo is a non-profit facility that provides veterinary care to orphaned, poisoned, sick or injured animals with the goal of releasing as many as possible back into the wild. The tour guides will not sugarcoat the harsh realities of what it takes to work in nature conservation and the challenges threatening our wildlife. It is up to these dedicated conservationists to make the difficult decisions regarding the management of critically endangered species and what to do with the animals who have had unfortunate encounters with humans. All the animals receiving treatment and awaiting release are kept well away from visitors so that they don't become habituated to humans. But on the tour, you will see some of the center's permanent residents. These are animals that cannot be released into the wild for various reasons, so they serve as ambassadors for the survival of their species. Many of these species are misunderstood, feared, killed by poachers, hunters and farmers. So these guys do an important job educating the public, many of whom will never get the opportunity to see and appreciate them in the wild. At Moholo Holo, everyone can learn about the lives of these amazing creatures and the important role they play in our world. Some of these animal ambassadors were orphaned or abandoned and found and raised by humans. Some became habituated to humans, sometimes due to irresponsible behaviour or simply due to their proximity to human settlements and became hazardous to the local community. Stoffel, the famous honey badger escape artist, is one of these rogue animals. The orphaned honey badger was rescued by a local farmer, but began wreaking havoc as he grew up. He now spends his retirement years hanging out in a reinforced enclosure with other honey badgers in the rehabilitation program. The fearless animal on planet. We have the legend Stoffel and Hemi. Some of the ambassador animals have sustained severe permanent injuries and can't survive in the wild. These birds of prey are all permanently injured, mostly from flying into power lines, and they can no longer fly or hunt. Vultures, although you may think them ugly, perform an important function as nature's butchers. They are among the few creatures that can slice through tough hides on carcasses, allowing smaller carnivores to feed on the meat inside, so that nothing goes to waste. Sadly, these amazing birds are endangered. Apart from being hunted for traditional medicine, they are the target of poisoning by poachers, who do not want flocks of circling vultures alerting anti-poaching units to the presence of a recently slain rhino. 
Speaking of rhino, we were lucky enough to see this adorable rescue. Despite an extensive search, the whereabouts of her mother are unknown. Rhinos are being poached to the brink of extinction. But hopefully this little one will one day grow up to become part of a captive breed and release program. I'll let Moses, our guide, tell you more about that. In the last five years, we managed to free six white rhinos back into the wild. And they are doing perfectly. Small wildcat species like caracal and serval are another captive breeding success story. These small predators can breed in captivity with minimal human intervention and be released into the wild. Moholoholo has released over 180 servals into the wild and even reintroduced them to areas of South Africa where they have not been seen for almost a century. Unfortunately for the big cats like lion and leopard, it is not so simple. The center does not have a breeding program for big cats, and you should be very wary of any facility offering lion-cub interactions, as those same lions are likely destined for the canned hunting industry. Captive-bred or hand-reared big cats cannot survive in the wild. Inversely, wild big cats will not tolerate long-term captivity, so those too severely injured to be rehabilitated and released have to be put down. Therefore, all the big cat ambassadors at Maholoholo were captive bred or hand reared by humans. Some were rescued from circuses or confiscated from breeders or the canned hunting business. Although it's sad to see these majestic creatures behind fences instead of in the wild, a comfortable life is arguably better than a brutal death at the hands of hunters or wild lions. Furthermore, as ambassadors, they are undoubtedly helping to inspire an appreciation and newfound understanding for many visitors. We humans cause so much suffering for animals. It is my belief that when we are the cause of their suffering, we should be responsible to make it right. For more information on Maholo Holo and the work they do, click on the link in the description. Back at the backpackers, it was time for a sunset stroll around the eco-village and then dinner time. The next morning, we were eager to take in some of the breathtaking scenery of the Blader River Canyon. While examining the GPS for a possible dirt road shortcut to Burke's Lap Potholes, we noticed a 4x4 mountain pass up to Maripskop viewpoint. It was, of course, the very top of the same beautiful mountain I'd been admiring since our arrival, and which I'd gazed at countless times on previous visits to the area. I wouldn't recommend driving the pass without a 4x4 as the road is pretty rough. You'll see signs on your way up saying no casual visitors but it seems like that simply refers to the fact that you'll have to buy a permit for a small fee when you reach the entrance of the nature reserve near the top. Inside the reserve, you'll drive through a verdant indigenous forest, lush with great carpets of ferns and lichen-covered trees woven with vines. You'll feel like you've entered Jurassic Park. When you emerge, you'll find yourself atop a rockery of shrubs, aloes and proteas. At the very top, we wandered the ruins of an abandoned weather station. Don't worry, the new weather station stands nearby, alongside an Air Force base, which we assumed to be put to good use in anti-poaching efforts.
then we had a picnic with a view. This is the Blader River Canyon and it is magnificent. There are plenty of roads and hiking trails to explore on Maripskop, so bring your comfortable hiking shoes and go and find those waterfalls. After all that adventuring, we popped into town to get some supplies. Most importantly, carrots for my friends the donkeys back at Nourish. And a pizza at the Hood Sprite Brewery before heading back to enjoy the sunset and swimming pool at Shik Shack. The next morning, we bid farewell to Nourish Eco Village and headed off to the Kruger National Park. Join us in the next episode as we explore the central region of the Kruger Park from the beautiful rustic Balule Rest Camp.